In last week's video, we looked at the biology and physiology of the creature from the Black Lagoon, aka the Gill Man. In this video, we're going to be looking at another film that I have a great fondness for, The Thing from 1982. In the frozen isolation of Antarctica, humanity stumbled upon a terror beyond imagination. The Thing, the alien life form from John Carpenter's 1982 horror masterpiece, is not just a monster, it's a biological enigma. Today we'll examine the biology of this shape-shifting alien in depth. How does it function, survive and adapt? Let's dive into the terrifying science of the ultimate parasitic organism. The Thing, also known as the organism, is an extraterrestrial life form capable of mimicking any organism it comes into contact with, down to the cellular level. This isn't just imitation, it's assimilation, a complete biological takeover. But what kind of creature could evolve such an ability, and how does it operate on such a horrifying level of perfection? Let's break down its biology and see what makes it the ultimate predator. The thing's defining characteristic is its ability to replicate other organisms perfectly. But how does it achieve this? The key lies in its cells. These alien cells seem to operate as independent entities, capable of learning and adapting at an astonishing rate. Unlike Earth's organisms, the thing's cells likely contain advanced genetic material capable of rapid reorganisation. When it comes into contact with a host, its cells bind with the host's cells, analysing their structure and copying their DNA. This allows it to create an identical clone, indistinguishable from the original, both in appearance and behaviour. In essence, every cell of the thing functions as a miniature organism, working together in perfect harmony to achieve assimilation. This cellular independence is what makes the thing so resilient. It can survive as a whole, or in fragments, with each fragment capable of regenerating into a fully functioning entity. Survival is the thing's greatest strength. On Earth, it crash-landed in the Arctic millions of years ago, frozen until it was disturbed by the Norwegian research team. Despite being dormant for millennia, it reactivated instantly, suggesting a highly adaptable biology designed for extreme environments. The thing's ability to endure freezing temperatures indicates it has a biochemical composition vastly different from Earth-based life. It may rely on antifreeze like proteins or a molecular structure resistant to ice crystallisation, similar to certain extremophiles on Earth. Its resilience ensures it can lie in wait for new hosts, no matter how long that might take. Once active, it rapidly adapts to its surroundings. Its mimicry allows it to integrate into ecosystems without detection, posing a serious threat to any biosphere it invades. This adaptability makes it a perfect invader, quiet, undetectable and devastatingly efficient. The thing's true form is one of its biggest mysteries. Throughout the film, it takes on many grotesque and horrifying shapes, but these are likely just approximations of past hosts. This suggests that the thing has no original form, its default state is likely amorphous, a mass of tissue capable of reshaping itself endlessly. Its transformations are more than just horrifying, they're purposeful. The thing uses its shape-shifting abilities for defence, creating weapon-like appendages, or for offence, producing sharp claws and tentacles to overpower hosts. This fluidity makes it a master of adaptation, capable of evolving new traits in real time. Behaviourally, the thing is strategic and intelligent. It operates with a hive mind like consciousness, coordinating its efforts to assimilate while avoiding detection. It knows how to manipulate fear and paranoia, turning potential threats against each other. This psychological manipulation makes it as dangerous mentally as it is physically. How does the thing spread? It doesn't reproduce in the traditional sense. Instead, every encounter with a host is an opportunity to create more of itself. By assimilating another organism, it effectively duplicates itself, turning the host into a perfect replica of the thing. 
This parasitic method of propagation is both efficient and terrifying. Each host turned replica becomes another vector for infection, creating a chain reaction that can spread exponentially. On a global scale, this method would lead to the eventual extinction of all original life forms replaced entirely by the thing. The origins of the thing are left ambiguous, but its biology offers some clues. One theory is that it evolved on a harsh, resource-scarce planet where mimicry and assimilation became necessary for survival. In such an environment, the ability to take on the traits of other organisms would be a crucial evolutionary advantage. Alternatively, the thing might be the product of bioengineering, a weapon designed to infiltrate and conquer alien worlds. Its capacity to absorb, adapt and replicate would have been developed as a tool for colonisation or warfare. If true, this represents the pinnacle of biological engineering, capable of outsmarting and outlasting any adversary. Its ability to infiltrate and replicate makes it an ideal tool for conquering or neutralising other species. However, such a powerful organism might have escaped its creators, becoming a rogue entity drifting through space. This would explain its seeming lack of purpose beyond survival and assimilation. It could simply be fulfilling its original programming without oversight. Another theory is that the thing might be the result of an experiment gone wrong. On its home planet, scientists could have been attempting to create an adaptable organism for exploration, colonisation or medical purposes, but the experiment spiralled out of control. The thing's mimicry could have been intended for peaceful purposes like healing or environmental restoration before evolving into a dangerous and uncontrollable parasitic entity. One more theory is that the thing might not be from our universe at all. It could be an interdimensional organism, an eldritch entity that slipped into our reality. Its biological rules might not align with ours, explaining its seemingly supernatural abilities. In its home dimension, it might be a common life form with mimicry as a survival trait. However, in our reality, its biology appears horrifyingly alien, and it operates with rules that defy our understanding of life. One final theory, this one being my personal favourite, is that it could be that the thing is a part of a biological cleanup crew designed by an advanced civilization to recycle dead or obsolete ecosystems. Its mimicry and assimilation abilities would allow it to integrate into any biosphere, consuming and repurposing life forms. However, if unleashed on a thriving ecosystem like Earth, it would act more like an apocalyptic parasite, breaking down life indiscriminately. Whatever it is, the thing is more than a monster. It's a terrifying possibility. Its biology demonstrates the power of evolution, adaptability and survival at all costs. It's a reminder of how fragile life can be when faced with an organism that operates beyond our understanding. Whether it's an ancient organism or an engineered weapon, the thing represents the ultimate biological nightmare. Thank you for joining me on this deep dive into the possibilities of what the thing could be. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe and stay tuned for more journeys into the unknown. I'd also like to thank my patrons and YouTube members who can be seen here. This has been the BewareCast and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.